All right, so here are all my Shea Moisture Shampoos. And I'm going to show you here right now. Sorry for the hair, it's wash day. I am going to show you right here what shampoos are similar to each other so that you don't double buy the same shampoo just because it has a different marketing label on the front. All right, let's get started. Hey, it's me, Natural Z, and welcome back to my channel where I do feature my natural hair journey as well as my fitness journey at my current age of 54 years old. And I'm coming at you today with a natural hair care video, and I am bringing you guys along on the ride for me as my objective is to grow my hair in the front to chin length so what i'm doing is i offer you guys my journey as well as offer you guys information about how to care for your natural hair and if you guys like my channel please make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and if you guys end up liking this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up questions and comments are more than appreciated so let's get into this video right now what I'm showing you guys right now are all my shampoos that I have from Shea Moisture. So I have been on this natural hair journey for at least three years and I have bought so many shampoos. Whenever I buy a new set of products, I always buy it from the shampoo down to whatever is included in that set of products. So here you're seeing all the shampoos that I have from Shea Moisture, which are six shampoos. And what I am going to be doing is offering you guys some information as far as do we really need to have all these shampoos or are some similar so that we can maybe use one shampoo with another set of Shea Moisture products. So this will be about consumer consumption and also helping you to avoid being a product junkie. Whenever we start out with our natural hair journey, the first thing we want to do is just buy products. So I am here to give you guys information that you can use in order to be a better consumer of products. So let's just start with the shampoos I have here. I am going to give you a breakdown of the ingredients of my Shea Moisture shampoos and the purpose of each ingredient in the shampoo. I'm going to focus on the first seven ingredients because within the seven ingredients are the main ingredients that focus on doing the job of the hair product. Read the ingredients list. Not the front of the label, but the back of the label. The ingredients list. The front of the label is called the marketing label. This is something for consumers to lure them in to buy this product. Now are those ingredients actually doing something to your hair? only way you can know that is by reading the back of the bottle the ingredients list and see where those ingredients are listed on that product all right so as far as shampoo it is there to clean your hair and your scalp the first five ingredients usually take up 80 to 90 percent of the concentration of the product so we really want to zone in on the first five ingredients because those are the ingredients that have the most impact on your hair and it will tell you what that product is going to do to your hair. All right, so let's get started. So I got my notes here. 
I always have my notes. I always do my research. I don't want to just come up here. And see, that's another thing. I try to go to a channel and find out about a product. And what I want to do is I'm not exactly giving you a review because these products may work different on your hair compared to how they work on my hair. So what I'm doing here is I want to provide you with information as to how to read an ingredients list and also know what each ingredient is in order to make better decisions about the products you buy. All right, so let's start with my staple shampoo right here. This is my Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore. I use the whole product line from the shampoo to the conditioners, leave-in conditioners, and the um, lock and braid butter to twist my hair. And let me list the first seven ingredients of this product. Number one, water. Number two, diesel glucoside. Number three, sodium laurel lactylate. Number four, fragrance. Number five, glycerin. Number six, hydrolyzed rice protein. And number seven is panthenol. Now, if you notice, I have not mentioned any of the ingredients featured on the front label, such as Jamaican black castor oil, the shea butter, peppermint, and apple cider vinegar. None of these ingredients are main ingredients in this product. So these ingredients don't have any actual contribution to what this product does. So let me run down the ingredients that I have just listed here and the purpose of the ingredient in the product. Now these ingredients are in order of concentration from highest to lowest and starting with water, water is the first ingredient with the highest content in the product. You may think it's there to help in the washing process of the hair, but the water is there to help blend the other ingredients and provide a formula that pours easily out of the bottle. Up to 80% of the shampoo is water. Without water in the product, the formula would be a waxy, thick consistency that would not easily pour out of the bottle. Number two, diesel glucoside. It is a surfactant, which is basically a detergent, which does the bulk of the work of cleaning your hair. It's a common ingredient in your shampoos and usually listed within the first three ingredients of a shampoo. Compared to water, diesel glucoside probably only takes up 4-5% to 5 concentration of the product. The diesel glucoside is a mild detergent that helps to remove dirt and oil. Dirt being product buildup, dirt from the elements, and oil being applied to your hair, as well as the natural oils called sebum secreted from the scalp. Number three, sodium laurel lactylate. This ingredient is an emulsifier. An emulsifier is used to keep oil and water from separating. It does not have a direct benefit to the hair. Its main purpose is to blend all the ingredients in the product together to provide a nice texture and consistency to the product. Number four, a fragrance. That is nothing to do with the care of your hair, but more with helping the product to smell good. That is all that's there for. Number five is glycerin. Glycerin is a humectant that's helping to bring moisture into your hair strands from the climate or the air. Number six is hydrolyzed rice protein. Hydrolyzed rice protein is a common ingredient in hair care products from shampoo to conditioners. In shampoos, they strengthen the hair strands by adding temporarily protein to the hair strands. The hair strands are made up of protein called keratin, but may lack some protein in areas of the hair strands that may be filled by the hydrolyzed rice protein, thus making the hair strands stronger, thicker, and fuller. And number seven, panthenol, is also a humectant, another ingredient to help with pulling moisture from the air and having your hair absorb that moisture. Based on these ingredients, this is a regular shampoo due to it has one surfactant, diesel glucoside, to strip the hair of dirt and oil, combined with other ingredients to minimize the complete stripping of the hair strands by replacing with moisture from the humectants and strength from the protein. 
and none of the ingredients featured on the front label are within the first seven ingredients of this product, thus indicating they do not have a significant impact on what this product does to your hair. Now the shampoo that is basically the same shampoo as the Jamaican black castor oil line is the Manuka Honey and Mephora Oil. The first four ingredients of the Manuka shampoo is actually the same as the Jamaican black castor oil. Now after the fourth ingredient, the ingredients order changes a little bit and the fifth ingredient in the Manuka shampoo is glycol disterate, number six is glycerin, and number seven is hydrolyzed rice protein. These two shampoos basically share the same formulas having six of the first seven ingredients being the same on paper. We can basically switch these two shampoos and would not notice a difference. Now, as far as the front label, they are obviously different looking to lure a consumer in based on the featured ingredients on the front label. With Jamaican black castor oil, it says that it is for natural, chemically processed and heat styled hair and is meant to cleanse and nourish. With the Manuka honey and Mephora oil, it says it's for dry damaged hair and it's intended to hydrate and replenish. Now, the only ingredient that's different in the Manuka honey and Mephora oil shampoo is the glycol disterate. Glycol disterate is a white waxy solid. It is a thickener that is added to a product's formula to create the desired creamy consistency of the product and also create a pearly white look to the formula itself. So it has nothing to do with the care of your hair, but more about just making sure the other ingredients in this product mix well together. Okay, so the next product from Shea Moisture is the Argon Oil and Almond Milk Shampoo. This shampoo shares the first two ingredients, which are water and then diesel glucoside. And then from there, number three is Cocomido Propyl Betaine. Number four is sodium laurel lactylate. Number five is sodium cocal isothionate. Number six is glycol disterate. Number seven, sodium methyl cocal torate. Sorry, I'm really bad with these names, but these are the actual ingredients listed on the back of the label. And as you can see here, comparing the front to the back, the ingredients featured on the front like the argon oil, the almond milk, the marshmallow root extract, and cherimoya. These are nowhere near within the first seven ingredients of this product. So as far as this shampoo, it's a deep cleansing shampoo based on it has two surfactants listed within the first seven ingredients, diesel glucoside and sodium cocal isothionate. And then the number three ingredient, Cocomido Propyl Betaine, that is a foam booster. Basically, it creates lather when you scrub your hair and scalp. It provides the satisfying suds that complete the hair washing experience. According to cosmetic manufacturing experts, lather does not have anything to do with how well the shampoo works. Manufacturers put Cocomido Propyl Betaine in the shampoo because it is what consumers expect lather and as far as the other ingredients the glycol disterate this is an emulsifier and for the seventh ingredient sodium methyl cocal torate this is also a foam booster so this shampoo is definitely all about just cleaning the hair compared to the other two shampoos which included hydrolyzed rice protein and humectants within the first seven ingredients. That one was also about moisturizing the hair as well as strengthening the hair with adding some protein to the hair strands. So moving on to the next shampoo, Curl and Shine Shampoo. Now this shampoo is pretty spot on in having a few ingredients featured on the marketing label, the front label. So let me go ahead and list the first seven ingredients of the Curl and Shine shampoo. One is water, 
two is diesel glucoside, three is coconut oil, four is shea butter, five aloe vera juice, six vitamin E, seven neem seed oil. The first two ingredients, water and diesel glucoside, are the same as the first two ingredients in the Jamaican black castor oil, the manuka, and the argan oil shampoos. But starting with the third ingredient in the curl and shine shampoo, the ingredients are completely different. A cool thing is two ingredients featured on the front label are main ingredients in the shampoo indicated by being listed within the first seven ingredients on the back label. The coconut oil and neem oil. But the bad thing is it is questionable if these ingredients are actually playing a significant role in the shampoo. In my research where I have gone to different websites by manufacturers as well as chemists, they have indicated that certain ingredients in a shampoo are actually only there for marketing purposes and not contributing to the effect of the shampoo. So as far as the third ingredient, coconut oil, coconut oil is really good in a conditioner, but it is questionable using it in a shampoo for the reasons that when you wash your hair, coconut oil will be one of those ingredients that will wash out of your hair. But it does have some protein that does latch onto your hair strands. And in that case, it can help with possibly helping to condition the hair just a little bit. It's not a lot, but just a little bit. And then the number four ingredient, shea butter, number five, aloe vera juice, vitamin E, and neem seed oil. The concentration of these ingredients in the product are next to neil compared to the water and the diesel glucoside. And as far as these ingredients as well, they will wash away when you are washing your hair. So these particular ingredients in the product are most likely there for marketing purposes in order to lure a customer in to buy this particular product. Sorry for the bad news, but again, remember a shampoo is intended to wash your hair and in scientific terms, these ingredients listed after diesel glucoside are water soluble, meaning that they will wash away when you use a surfactant on your hair and your hair will be stripped of most of the dirt and oils as a result of the surfactant diesel glucoside. So the Curl and Shine shampoo is a regular shampoo that is intended to clean your hair with some ingredients that are there for marketing purposes and basically wash away when you are washing your hair. Let's move on to the African Water Mint shampoo. This one here says on the front label, it's a detox and refresh hair and scalp shampoo and features African water mint and ginger as ingredients. Well, based on the label on the back where the ingredients are featured in order of concentration, African water mint is not a main active ingredient, nor is ginger. Based on the label on the back of the jar, the first seven ingredients are one water, two, sodium laurel methyl isothionate, three, cocomidal propyl betaine, four, glycerin, five, fragrance, six, shea butter, seven, menthol. And water usually takes up, again, the majority of the concentration of the product. Following that, number two, sodium laurel methyl isothionate. That is a coconut-derived surfactant surfactant meaning it is a cleanser but it is a mild cleanser helping to remove dirt product buildup and oil even the natural oils on our hair strands making it even more important to condition your hair after washing it now number three cocomidal propyl betaine is a foam booster this ingredient is also in the argon oil shampoo this is another common ingredient in shampoos and what a foam booster is, it helps to thicken the product and provide a good foam when shampooing the hair. Now according to websites led by chemists who specialize in creating hair products, the rest of the ingredients from 
the glycerin to the fragrance, shea butter, menthol are mainly there for marketing purposes. They don't really add anything to the process of shampooing your hair. Starting with glycerin, it is a humectant. A humectant is very common to add to shampoos, to conditioners. They don't work as well in shampoos, but they do work well in conditioners, especially a leave-in conditioner. The problem with glycerin is it is a water-soluble ingredient. So that means that when you're shampooing your hair and the shampoo does include glycerin as one of its ingredients, this ingredient is going to be getting washed away when you're washing your hair because that is what shampoo does. It washes away dirt, product buildup, oil. And as far as the shampoo, it does not separate one type of oil or dirt or ingredient from another, especially if an ingredient is water soluble. With the glycerin in the shampoo, it may attract some moisture to your hair and retain that moisture, but it's not as much as you may think. So when it comes to the ingredients, starting with the glycerin on down to the fragrance, the shea butter and the menthol, these are ingredients added to the product for marketing purposes. They don't perform any worthwhile function in the product other than to attract consumers to buy the product. And then last, the last one that we have here is the anti-breakage strengthening shampoo. This one right here stands alone. Because it does not have water listed as the first ingredient or even included as a main ingredient in the product. Based on this list of ingredients, this is not a shampoo for cleaning your hair. In fact, it contributes to product buildup on your hair rather than allowing it to strip your hair of product buildup. So let's just get right into it. On the front label of this product, the featured ingredients are yucca and plantain with baobab oil and cilantro extract. And it's intended for fixing frizzy, split, and breaking hair, stating it's an anti-breakage strengthening shampoo. Out of the six shampoos I have discussed, this is the only one without water being the first ingredient and not included in the formula. Without water, the product's consistency is more gooey instead of a liquid that pours easily out of the jar. So the first seven ingredients of this product is starting with number one, guar hydroxypropyl tramonium chloride. Number two, panthenol. Number three, steramide AMP. Number four, shea butter. Number five, baobab seed oil. Number six, aloe vera juice. Number seven, fragrance. So the front label states it's intended to fix frizzy, split, and breaking hair. If you think about it, it's very unlikely for a shampoo that is supposed to clean your hair and scalp is able to also fix frizz, split ends, and breaking hair. It's either one or the other. And honestly, there is no way to repair split ends or breaking hair with a shampoo or any other product. For these issues, you need to cut off the split ends to avoid it moving further up the hair strands. And for the breaking hair, trim the ends to get rid of the damaged ends. Remember, hair is dead and it can't be repaired. As for frizz, there are ingredients to minimize frizz and help to smooth the hair. And this particular product does have an ingredient that helps to minimize frizz and make the hair look smooth. And that ingredient is the main ingredient in this product. And that is the guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride. And it helps to smooth the cuticle layer of the hair strands. As for the remaining ingredients, starting with number two, panthenol. Panthenol is a humectant and a humectant again is something to help with pulling moisture from the air and having your hair absorb that moisture. Considering this product does not have a surfactant in the formula, the panthenol in this formula may actually be effective in retaining moisture in the hair strands. According to chemists, when it comes to manufacturing of products, if you apply a surfactant with water to your hair, 
the panthenol will wash away because it is something that cannot stick to your hair if you apply a cleanser and water to your hair strands. But in this case, with this particular product, there is not a surfactant, so this panthenol may actually be effective in retaining moisture in the hair strands. And then the number three ingredient is steramide AMP. That is a foam booster. That is helping the product to create suds. So when you're washing your hair, you're getting that lather that consumers are looking to have when they're washing their hair. This particular ingredient does not have any effect on the care of your hair, but it's more about the product and creating the suds that we look for when we're washing our hair. The number four ingredient is shea butter. If this was in a conditioner, it is a great moisturizer to your hair, helps with conditioning the hair, but unfortunately in this shampoo, this is something that is water soluble this particular ingredient most likely will be washed away with this product. Number five, the Baobab oil. This is an oil like any other oil that will help with locking in moisture. And number six, aloe vera juice. To be honest with you, I think this particular ingredient is a marketing claim. It really doesn't have any significant impact on the care of your hair or contributing to what this product does and then number seven is fragrance fragrance is purely for the product and not for your hair it's helping to make the product smell good all right well that is it for this video i hope you liked it it was a lot of information about the six shampoos that i have in my collection of shampoos they're all shea moisture I am no expert on natural hair care, but I am a nerd. I have a very inquisitive mind and I need to know how something works and if it works. So when it comes to these shampoos here, I needed to know why certain ingredients were in the product and if these particular ingredients help to make the shampoo better and if so, why. I searched on websites that were geared towards actually making the product. And who makes the product? It is chemists. Chemists are hired by the manufacturer to actually make the formula. And so those websites will give you the real deal as to what is going on and if certain ingredients are effective and is helping to do what is intended of the product. And in this case, it is shampoo. Shampoo is intended to clean your hair meaning it is intended to uh, remove dirt, remove oil, remove product buildup, and also by chance the natural oils that we secrete from our scalp. In our case with 4C hair, oils from our scalp does not go down our hair strands so we really don't have to worry about having oily hair. But when it comes to cleaning our hair we have to worry about product buildup and also dirt from the environment so that is what shampoos are intended to do and what i think we get thrown off by is that we are looking for a shampoo to be able to clean our hair as well as condition our hair but what you need to know is shampoo is not intended to actually condition your hair these type of shampoos here every one of them would be considered a gentle shampoo because based on the list of ingredients in the product starting from the second ingredient which is usually a surfactant which is basically a detergent these all have a mild detergent in the formula so it's not completely stripping your hair and as far as the other ingredients included in the product or in the formula those are actually washed away as a result of the surfactant being a main ingredient in these shampoos. So what I'm trying to say, when it comes to a shampoo, don't worry about actually what brand of shampoo you get if the first seven ingredients are very similar because that means that they pretty much work the same. And in this case, if you went through this whole video that I just did, the first five to seven ingredients within the formula for these products are very similar. So you may get the same effect using any one of these shampoos. 
So what I want to really conclude this video with is don't waste your money on the shampoo. If you are looking for a gentle shampoo, use the shampoo and then from there your wash routine obviously does not stop there. After you have cleaned your hair, then you move on to the next stage of your wash routine, which is conditioning your hair. So what I have discovered in making this video is that I am not going to be uh, losing sleep over my shampoo and not worry about buying another jar of this shampoo when I have all these other shampoos on my shelf that I can actually use and it will probably be no different than the shampoo here and that is again because a wash routine does not stop with your shampoo now I don't want to say that a shampoo will work a particular way on your hair because it may work different on your hair compared to my hair so you try out a shampoo stick with it if you like it but again, make sure you read the ingredients label instead of the front label. And also, you may like a certain smell of a certain shampoo compared to a different one. Like this one has a very minty smell and that result of the fragrance that they put in this particular brand of shampoo. Now with a fragrance, a fragrance in the shampoo does not make that shampoo work any better on your hair. All it does is help with making the product smell better. And if you like the smell of a minty shampoo, go with this one. If you like the smell of coconut, go with this one. But as far as a fragrance being in the shampoo, it does not help to make the shampoo work any better. So I want you to be aware that there are certain ingredients in the product that are not geared towards making the shampoo work better but it geared towards what a consumer likes and is drawn to so you may be drawn to argan oil you may be drawn to african water mint you may be drawn to coconut oil but just because those ingredients are featured on the front of the label that does not mean that it is working to make the shampoo better so that was a lot but I really just want to get across to you guys that when it comes to caring for your hair, keep it simple. A shampoo is intended to clean your hair and then following that you want to condition your hair with your conditioners, especially your leave-in conditioners and then your gels that you use to twist your hair. You will have your oils to lock in the moisture from the conditioners that you put in your hair. So a wash routine involves several steps that you decide what you want to include in your wash routine. One being a pre-poo, then the shampoo is intended to clean your hair, then the conditioners, if you choose to use a deep conditioner, those ingredients are different from what is used in a shampoo, and then following deep conditioner, you have a leave-in conditioner, and then from there, if you twist your hair, you have a gel to twist your hair, things like that. So it is a whole process and shampoo is just one step in that process and think of it that way. So keep your shampoo simple, use a gentle shampoo and decide on a smell you like. But remember the smell or the fragrance of the shampoo does not make the shampoo work any better. All right. So with that, I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, please make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. And also, if you have any one of these shampoos, let me know which one you like the best. Have you tried all these shampoos? And if so, which one do you like? Have you compared the shampoos? So I want to finish this one off. And again, I hope you guys like it. Make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Questions, make sure you post them below. Let me know which one of these you use and if you compared. And last, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. I will bring you more videos about my natural hair journey where I am looking to grow my hair in the front to chin length. Okay, so that is it for now. Please take care of yourself both mentally and physically. This is Naturally Z signing out. Peace. It's cold